Hello, I'm Howard, pastor of the Roseville New Church, and welcome to Spiritual Shorts. This episode is going to be a little bit unique as I am looking to tell the Christmas story in a unique way. You know, at Christmas time, it is common in many Christian churches to recreate static scenes from the Christmas story with live actors. Such recreations are often called nativity tableau services. Several years ago, during a Christmas season when the church I was serving had difficulty re recruiting enough actors, I decided to use projected images. And not just any images, but images of the Christmas story made with Legos. One person in the congregation called it a nativity Lego. I hope you enjoy this. If you have children, uh, grandchildren, and you want to share this with them, I encourage you, they will be riveted to the images. Let's begin. Every detail of the Christmas story is true, and every word has meaning. The bright star that shone in the darkness to represent the truth that had come to a dark world. The Lord was laid in a manger because he would spiritually feed those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. There was no room in the inn because there was no room for God in people's hearts. He was not born among the rich and powerful, but among the poor, because as it is said in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, he was to put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt the lowly. So the angels did not appear to rulers, but to poor shepherds, symbolic rulers of the flock of Israel. He was born to a virgin because he was the Son of God, but also because a virgin stands for the innocent love in every person's heart that first accepts God into their life. The angels of heaven rejoiced at every one of these events, which represented to them the purpose of his coming and the fulfillment of the ancient prophecies. They will rejoice whenever this story is heard or read, especially when it touches the heart of a child. For his birth takes place repeatedly in every person, and his work of salvation goes on continually. As we look at this story again, I hope you can see this deeper meaning while also experiencing the drama of the story itself. Around 700 years before the Lord's birth, as Jerusalem and all of Judea lived under the shadow of Assyrian rule, Isaiah rose and prophesied of the one who would surely come. Isaiah wrote, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. 
But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother's mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. For all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered everyone to his city. 
Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And there was no room for them in the inn. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. 
you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the sayings which were told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem was troubled with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him bring, him, bring back word to me that I may go and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, until it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Because people are natural and so think in a natural fashion, connection between God and people must take place in their thinking, and so in their love's affection. This happens when we think of God as a person. A relationship with a visible God as a person is like seeing a man in the air or the sea opening his arms and inviting you into his embrace. And the world became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so Jehovah God came down and took on a human form, so as to restore to order everything in heaven, in hell, and in the church. For at that time the power of hell prevailed over the power of heaven, and on earth the power of evil prevailed over the power of good. The impending damnation 
was removed by Jehovah God by means of his human, and this redeemed angels and people. It shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is Jehovah. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Spiritual Shorts. I do hope that you are able to experience the joy of Christmas this season.